So, a lot of flat earthers lately are using terms like angle of attack or you know angle of lim limitation to explain why things appear to disappear from the bottom up when they're traveling into the distance. At angle of attack or you know angle of lim limitation to explain why things appear to disappear from the bottom up when they're traveling into the distance. But one thing that's creeping in is a little bit of maths called the Rayleigh criterion. It's not that difficult, but it's something that not a lot of people hear of. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to run you through the basics of that, just so you can use it to review uh, anybody that's coming up with this nonsense. Before we talk about the early criterion, I want you to cast your mind back at school to times you might have done stuff like this. Now you'll have done that when you looked at diffraction, which this isn't a lesson on diffraction, but essentially it's when a wave spreads out after passing through a gap. We'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, you may have done it with light when you did Jung's slits experiment, and you may have seen a pattern like this. And you may recognise this picture as being the diffraction pattern that occurs when a wave travels through a circular opening or aperture. Okay, so the Rayleigh criterion basically describes the physics and maths behind uh, resolution. How do I know whether when I look at uh, two objects, I'm going to be able to resolve them? Or whether they're going to blur into one. So here I've got object A and I've got object B. Now, when I look at them, whether I look at them through my eye or whether I look at them through a camera, the light is going to pass through an aperture and I'm going to get a diffraction pattern. Now, if the diffraction pattern, so this is a diffraction pattern from A, this is the one caused by B, you know, it's gone through the aperture and diffracted. If the diffraction patterns are very clearly separate, then I have no problem in resolving the fact that I've got two different objects there. But if I move these objects closer together, or I take them much further away, these diffraction patterns will start to get closer together. Now, there is a limit to how close they can get before I actually um, can't tell them apart anymore. And that limit is when the, the uh, central peak of one sits directly on top of the, uh, the first minima, if you like, the first minimum uh, of the next. Now, if they get any closer than this, I cannot resolve them as being two objects. They are one object, as far as my eyes are concerned. Now, there is a viewing angle associated with this. I'm going to call this theta min. So how do I calculate the minimum viewing angle I need? I'll put this in some context later on. Well, if I have uh, the diffraction patterns in this position here, then this viewing angle, theta min, will be calculated by 1.22 lambda, lambda being the wavelength of light. Now, obviously, it will be an average of the wavelength of light because different colours have different wavelengths. Uh, so 1.22 lambda divided by D, which is the diameter of the aperture of the camera or your eye. Now, what that means is what we already all know, that if I increase the diameter of the camera, if I get a, basically a bigger lens, um, then the viewing angle is reduced. Then the viewing angle is reduced. And what that means is I can resolve um, two objects that are close together better. I have a better resolution. I'm going to get a better picture from the same distance if I have a bigger lens. And we know that. So what's this got to do with um, things disappearing from the bottom? Well, if I'm stood on uh, the shore looking at a boat across the water, then maybe I want to know, can I resolve the top of the chimney from this part of the deck here? And I will have a viewing angle. Now, if this viewing angle is bigger than theta min, right, 1.22 lambda divided by d. If that's bigger than theta min, then I'll be able to resolve this part of the boat from this part of the boat. Maybe there's two little things here I want to resolve. And if the viewing angle between those two things is bigger than theta min, I can resolve them. If I want to resolve the bottom of the boat to the top of the boat, then I've got this entire angle. And if that is bigger than theta min, I'll be able to tell the top from the bottom. But nowhere, absolutely nowhere, does the Rayleigh criterion say it's got anything to do with things disappearing from the bottom. The only thing I can think that they are talking about when they're talking about this um, limited angle is they are talking about this angle here. All right, so let's get rid of these lines at the top, actually. We don't need those. I'm pretty sure they are talking about this angle here. As you get lower to the ground, this angle here starts to get smaller. But this isn't the angle that includes our field of view. Our field of view is this angle here for the boat. So this really is totally unrelated. Cats, your field of view starts before the boat. As you can see, that's the angle that's getting smaller. So what they've understood is if the viewing angle gets smaller than theta min, then we can't resolve two objects. But then they've looked at this viewing angle, which is completely irrelevant. Um, they've flat-eyed it, 
And then suddenly thought that if I get lower and lower and lower, I can't see the bottom of the boat. And it's a complete misapplication. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So, so if anyone tries to bring up the Rayleigh criterion with you, at least you understand it. Good luck in explaining in, uh, to them why they're wrong, because we all know they'll never admit they are. Bye bye. Well, cats, let me shatter your reality a bit with an actual demonstration of showing bottom up obstruction thanks to diffraction limit, the limited angle. This is a 9 meter long spray booth. The floor is horizontal and flat. Please watch this board very carefully, Cats and Co, as it totally demolishes your argument with actual live demonstration. Thank you.